is Mark Chase. And I'm not going to say much other than to say that I think um, what he's about to talk about is pretty cool because it's about using art and creativity to make our streets safer. Thank you very much. It's great to be here tonight. And 10 years ago, I was one of the first board members on the, on the first original board of Liberal Streets. And it's, it's kind of like seeing a child grow up. And it's a strapping child that's doing amazing stuff, 10 years old, and really doing a lot of amazing things. So it's, it's an emotional moment for me to be here and, and great. So Neighborways, what is it? Well, I'll tell you a little bit about our organization. I think there's quite a few people in the audience who have been involved with Neighborways, either come to some of our uh, neighborhood socials where we've tried to get people involved, but also traffic engineers, I don't know if Tom Bertoulis is here, but over there, and Michelle Moon, who's a planner. We have landscape architects, we have a lot of people who are involved, including Livable Streets Advocacy Committee, which I'll tell more about that later. But um, what we're doing, this went a little fast, it might, I hope it's not on autoplay or something, but uh, what we're trying to do is make our streets more engaging for kids to play, to increase neighbor interaction, to calm traffic, and to also be a great network for cyclists of all ages and abilities. And uh, one of the ways we do that is with art in the street, but I want to talk a little bit about our inspiration and where we got this idea from. We stole a lot of ideas from several cities. The, most, the, the first city to really do anything like this, as far as I know, was Berkeley. They have something called the Bicycle Boulevard Network, which started out as traffic calming, and they suddenly saw a lot of bicyclists on the street. And suddenly they were like, well, we can create a low-stress network. Vancouver has also been doing this, but with what I would call higher production values. If you look at this beautiful bump out here, these bump outs are really quite delightful. And, and that was really inspiring. And then Seattle recently has done something a little bit artistic, and this was very inspiring to us, which is the playful horse and the dogs and some really cool stenciling. So we, we started, I, I, will, I will say the last inspiration is Portland, Oregon, and I don't know if people have seen these murals. They're eye-popping. There is something like 40 or more of these murals in the city of Portland. And we're trying to bring elements from each of these into Somerville neighborways, and our goal is quite ambitious, and it is to connect every single school with every single park and every square, which if you know the Boston area means a business district, like every business district. How come I'm? Every business district in the city with low stress, low traffic streets. And we've been working on this for, uh, I think, about four years. But this is the first year that things are starting to happen. And that's what I'm going to share with you tonight. So we're looking at low stress, low, low str traffic streets. And critically, no parking is harmed in the making of the neighborway. Uh, that, that, that is funny for us at Livable Streets, but it's actually a crucial piece of, of making this all work. Free range kids, I don't know how many of you are parents, but and many of you may remember when you were kids, you could go out and play on the street, and now parents are afraid, and sometimes there's actually um, parents calling on parents saying, you're being abusive to your kids by letting them go out and roam around, and this is a huge issue. This is really a huge public policy issue. So we're trying to address the 8 to 80 year olds who would feel more comfortable on the street. How do we do that? We have gateway treatments. This is something we're experimenting with. We call it our soccer ball crosswalk. How come? Our soccer ball crosswalk. So as a car is coming in here, they're thinking, this is a different kind of street. Something's going on here. I think I might have autoplay going on on this, unfortunately. So. One of the things I do with this presentation is play it in a circle so neighbors can see what's going on. But we, we engage neighbors to paint bump outs in the street. And these bump outs narrow the crossing distance so that it's safer for people to cross. They also signal to cars that something is going on and, and essentially add logos as well. You can see we have four different logos which are people walking, dog walkers, kids playing, and the bicycle logo is not shown here, but we have the bicycle logo. And we do this all ourselves. The city of Somerville has been amazingly supportive, but we have raised all the money um, and painted this ourselves. So 
it's been probably four months since we've done the first few streets. We have seen people walking dogs in wheelchairs, people out with trailers, kids. It really is engaging the street. If people know Jan Gell, he's build it and they will come. The exciting thing about this is it's super low cost. It's very scalable and I'm hoping we can, uh, we are piloting these ideas in Somerville. We're hoping we can do this in other parts of the Boston area as well. So this is a, a rendering of a mural. Uh, we actually did paint this. Here's, here's a resident starting to get going on it uh, with his child, actually his neighbor's child in his arms. And here are kids doing some, some uh, detail work on the edges. And it came out looking like this. It's a bird theme. You'll notice some birds. And the neighbors got really excited and painted bird houses. There are over 40 bird houses on the street. And again, kids are totally engaging the street. Uh, very low cost by, uh, by bicycle pedestrian facility standards. Not as cheap as a bike lane, but far cheaper than a uh, cycle track or other protected bike lanes. It's, it's, it's really rebranding the streets. So I don't know how, if people here know Somerville very well, but our pilot is to connect the high school with Davis Square. This is the community path that exists. And the community path will hook up to these green lines, which are neighbor ways, and these yellow lines are busier streets that we are working on to create protected, child-friendly streets on. So this is this 2015 pilot. We've covered this area here, and we're a little behind to get the rest of it, but we will get there early next spring. And then next year, we want to connect East Somerville with West Somerville with a spur that goes under McGrath Highway. There's only one street in the whole city that goes under McGrath. So what's the secret sauce? It's vision, paint and planters, and community engagement. Probably the hardest part is actually community engagement, where we work with neighborhood leaders, artists, and all ages and skills and abilities. And Finally, we're hoping to do this in other places, and I'm going to end a little early, I think. So thank you very much. I'll be around.